crashes, defective products, dangerous drugs, injuries, and abuse. Across the state of Alabama, the attorneys, proudly sponsored by the law firm of Hollis Wright, are here to serve you. Your tough legal questions answered by our experts with host David Lamb and the attorneys of Hollis Wright. Good evening and welcome into the attorneys. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Got a very interesting topic of conversation, a great panel of experts. Before we do the introductions, a couple of reminders. There are ways you can join our conversation. That information at the bottom of your screen all throughout the program tonight. So as long as we're on the air, we would love to hear from you. But one other thing that Hollis Wright, how they go above and beyond, they make attorneys um, uh, available who are standing by live to speak with you. So all throughout the program tonight, actual attorneys are standing by live. It's a free off air and confidential conversation, a great opportunity and yours for the taking. So if at any point tonight you think you'd like to actually speak with an actual attorney, you have the opportunity to do that as long as we are on the air tonight. So don't miss that opportunity. Leading our conversation, Carter Clay from Hollis Ride. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you, David. I hope you're doing well. Doing well. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. You know, we've done a lot of these shows over the years and we've handled criminal law and criminal criminal procedure quite mm -hmm. often. And right. when we handle those types of legal topics, we have briefly touched upon the concept of expungement. And right. you probably recall some questions coming mm -hmm. up in the past related to expungement, but we really have never done a deep dive into the area of expungement, explained exactly what that is and how to go about getting a criminal record expunged. And it's particularly important, as our guest is going to explain a little while, because there have been some changes within the last year that really make this a growing area of legal practice within criminal law. And we're very fortunate tonight to have Cherie Dudley here Hello. with us. Cherie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good uh, to be here. Is this your first time with us, I believe, it, right? It is. Well, don't be nervous. David Lamb is a true professional. <laughs> I can't, not me, but David Lamb is a true professional. We're really glad to have you on the show with us uh, here this evening to share your thoughts and views on this particular area of law. Because as I mentioned at the outset, my understanding is, is that based on the ch a change in the law that happened about a year ago. This is really sort of a growing area of legal practice for somebody like yourself. But before we get into that, just tell the viewers a little bit about yourself, about where you practice and kind of what the focus is at your law firm. Um, I practice in Jefferson County predominantly. I have an office downtown Birmingham and also have a satellite office in Bessemer, Alabama. So I do predominantly criminal law, of course, I do expungements, and then I do family law as well. Great, great. Well, when we talk about expungement, just kind of broadly speaking, what are we what are we referring to there? Okay. Well, an expungement is a legal process by which a person can have a criminal charge removed from their criminal history, where it's not going to be available to public access. Right. Now, you mentioned criminal charge, and and historically, that has been very important in distinguishing charge from conviction because as I understand it prior to the recent law changes really all that you could get expunged were situations where you were charged with a crime and I'm going to oversimplify this a little bit but okay. situations where you were charged with a crime but not convicted but the charge or the arrest was still in the court system is that correct that is exactly right all right now talk a little bit about I guess about a year ago uh, Governor Ivey signed into to law some additional um, opportunities for people to have their record expunged can you explain just a little bit about what happened there sure um, last February 2021 Governor Kay Ivey signed the Redemption Act into uh, law it actually took effect in July, July 1st of 2021. But what it does is it allows a person to have a conviction, certain convictions, right. uh, removed from their criminal record, including certain felonies as long as they're non-valid felonies. Yeah. And there's some conditions with that as well. And, and we're going to talk about those certain convictions as we get into the show because I know that there are some very specific aspects and hoops that you've got to kind of jump through um, to make that happen. But kind of broadly speaking, as a lawyer, of course, you and I have access to the Alicourt system. And, and we, I can go on there and I can look up somebody's 
criminal record if I have their date of birth and their full name and enough personal information to do that. But where is this kind of important for people in the general public? I mean, one of the things that we're going to talk about is employment backgrounds. Is, is, is that sort of the major area where people are interested in having a record expunged is because they feel like it's causing some additional challenges for them in an employment setting? Absolutely. Employment is a major area and so this law is a great opportunity for people to have gainful employment in, you know, whatever their particular area is. Another area is credit. Um, if you apply for a loan and things right. of that nature, a lot of times they'll check your credit to see if you have, um, your background will show and if there's a charge there, that would show as well. So that's another good opportunity um, to use an expungement yeah, and, for. And that's a great point because people go when they rent an apartment or they maybe try and buy a car on a and loan or a rental agreement with an apartment or something like that. They may do a background check where something like that could come up. Absolutely. Uh, are there services out there <clears throat> that will will that people will contract with or companies will contract with to do those types of background searches where those companies have access to people's criminal records because I know just businesses out there probably wouldn't know where to to go to do a background check on somebody do they contract that stuff out to other services to run the background checks yes they do normally they'll have a particular group that they use to do perform their background checks and those those uh, groups have access access to criminal records. It's, a, it's also, a, you know, of course, a public record. So they are able to do that work for the different businesses. Yeah. What, um, talk a little bit about what is the sort of the general process or kind of give us a summary uh, or overview of what the expungement process would look like from kind of beginning to end. Okay, well, first, of course, there would be an application. Uh, it's called a petition for expungement. Once that is submitted to the court, uh, in that petition it's going to contain information where the uh, petitioner is letting the court know that they've met the requirements for an expungement. So um, that's pretty much how it started. Of course, the judge would be the ultimate decision maker, is at the court's discretion. But if the court is satisfied that the person, that the petitioner has met the conditions for an expungement, they will grant it. And, and how long from beginning to end does that process generally take? And do you have to have a hearing? Does the person typically have to go before the judge uh, and have a hearing? The process can be lengthy. It does take a while. But uh, you don't necessarily have to have it here. If the judge can de determine, excuse me, if the judge determines on the evidence that the person has met the requirements, then he can, he or she can go ahead and grant the petition okay. immediately. Right, David, I think this is a good time to go to break. When we come back from the break, we'll talk about the particulars of what the criteria is that you have to meet to have a chance to get your record expunged. That sounds good. Perfect time to step aside. Uh, stay with us. We have more of the attorneys coming right up. I'm Josh Wright with the law firm of Hollis Wright, a personal injury law firm, and thank you for watching The Attorneys. We hope you, a friend, or a loved one never needs legal counsel for a case. But if you do, the goal of the show is simple, to provide answers and legal counsel when you need it the most. Your call to the show is free and all fair. So if you have questions specific to the show or related to other accident or injury topics, call, email, or text us. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, or go to hollis-right.com and click on the Contact Us button. We know your time is valuable, so thank you for spending it with us and watching The Attorneys. The Attorneys, proudly sponsored by the law firm of Hollis Wright, are here to serve you. When we started the show eight years ago, my hope was 
we would be able to do what we do best, which is to help people answer real-world legal-related issues they have in their life. People oftentimes are confronting various legal issues and problems in their lives that range across the gamut of legal practice areas. Bankruptcy, criminal law, family law, just to name a few. And to be able to have a 30-minute platform or format to where we can just cover various legal topics once a week uh, that's obviously the primary focus of the show. That we would be able to use the resources of the many lawyers we have at this law firm to create a plan that had a lasting impact that also gave back to the community at the same time. And I think we've done just that with the attorneys. Welcome back to the attorneys. We're going to jump back into our conversation uh, here about expungement. A question we've got uh, here, the, the question says, uh, ask, I know that I have a criminal record, but it's not showing up on my criminal history. Do I still need to seek an expungement for that charge? That's a good question. It is. Um, the answer to that question is yes. Actually, there are different entities such as government, law enforcement agencies, um, DHR, the Alabama Office of For Forensic Sciences that may have uh, different records pertaining to a charge, whether it be arrest report, it could be photographs, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And if those items have not been delivered to Aaliyah, it won't show in your record, of course, but sometimes those find their way to Aaliyah for one reason or another, maybe because it was an old record that never got uh, put in electronically. Right. They're in the process of doing that these days, so it could show up for that reason, or maybe it got lost on the local level, but someone had some information and, you know, reported it to Aaliyah. Yeah. So you definitely want to go ahead and get an expungement so that that information, if it does turn up, it will not be included on your history for yeah. public access. And Aaliyah is Alabama Law Enforcement Agency? That's right? exactly right. Yeah. And if um, it's important to know that if it does, if you get the expungement and it shows up later, then it will not be added to your criminal history as far as public access purposes. That's great. Let's distinguish uh, before the recent change in the law and after the recent change of the law. So before uh, Governor Ivey signed into law, the, the law that came effect uh, about a year or so ago, you could get uh, charges or arrests associated with misdemeanors and felonies expunged? As long as it was a charge and the felony was a non-violent felony. But the conditions was, like you said earlier, it would have to be something that was either null pros, dismissed, or you were found not guilty. All right, and null pros just means the prosecutor decided not to prosecute it? Correct, they don't go forward with right. prosecution. And so now with the new law, as you mentioned in the first segment, you're now able to at least have a chance at getting certain misdemeanor convictions and certain types of felony convictions expunged for uh, from your record as well, correct? That's exactly right. But there are some, there's some, I was reading through the pre-production materials, there's some pretty specific criteria that you've got to, got to meet. I, it sounded to me like it kind of jumped out at me. They're, they're willing to give you the opportunity to have these convictions expunged in certain situations, but they're going to make you work for it. Absolutely. Especially correct. as it relates to getting a felony conviction expunged. Very much, very much so. All right, well, let's talk about misdemeanors first. What types of misdemeanors, I guess, convictions are you not going to be able to have a chance to get expunged? Uh, a misdemeanor conviction that is a violent uh, conviction, such as domestic violence, uh, also any type of sex crime would not be eligible for expungement. Um, if there's a situation where there was a commercial vehicle involved, those are not eligible. So just about three, maybe to five. Exceptions. How about there was a reference to moral turpitude, which is basically crimes, I think, of dishonesty. Uh, moral turpitude is a fancy legal concept or term, but it's basically a crime of dishonesty like theft. Can you get those types of misdemeanor convictions expunged potentially? Potentially you can. Okay. Theft would be one that's generally going to be eligible, but if it's uh, some type of conspiracy, that type thing, it would be um, 
moral turpitude and that would not be eligible. All right. Now the felony convictions, a little bit more onerous uh, and a lot more criteria there, but talk a little bit about what an individual who's confronted with a felony conviction would need to do. And first of all, let's talk about again, are there certain types of felony convictions that you can sort of forget about it in terms of having a chance to be expunged. Certainly, it's pretty much like the misdemeanors. Of course, okay. it's going to have to be nonviolent, not a sex crime, um, those type things that we mentioned with regards to the misdemeanors. So um, that those are not going to be expunged. All right, let's talk about the additional criteria that's involved. If you think you're eligible for expungement on a felony conviction, there is some additional criteria. Uh, one of the items is listed here is the person has been granted a certificate of pardon with restoration of civil and political rights from the Board of Pardons and Parole. Explain yeah. to the viewers what that means. <laughs> that's the big one. That's, okay. that's the one that um, people have the most trouble overcoming. But uh, the Alabama Board of Pardon and Parole's uh, application would need to be made to them to get your pardon. And of course, you would have a hearing before the pardon board on that. But once a person does or is granted a certificate of pardon, that does make them uh, almost there on getting a felony conviction expunged. Now, is that something that if somebody hired you, would you handle the application to the pardon and parole board? Would that be part of what you would do as a lawyer trying to get it expunged, or is that something you would expect them to accomplish before they come to you? That can be done either way. Okay. Normally, I do it, but uh, I've had people to come to me and they've already, you know, filed their application for pardon. Um, just recently, I had someone that filed their application for a pardon. All I did was went to the hearing with them. We were able to secure the pardon, and I am now working on his um, expungement. Do you have a preference either way? Do you, are you, do you prefer doing the whole thing, or do you kind of like that aspect? Um, I don't necessarily have uh, a preference. Of course, for the uh, petitioner, it's you know more cost effective I would say if they do the pardon part by themselves. Now I did see that there are some time components in terms of how long you have to wait before you can even petition or apply for a, uh, an expungement, is that correct, on these misdemeanor and felony convictions? Sure, that's correct. If it's a misdemeanor, you have to wait three years from the conviction date. Okay. And then felony is uh, it's a shorter time, it's 180 days, but it's from the date of the certificate of pardon. So it's 180 days, but it's normally a lot longer. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's step aside. Yep. All right, our final break of the evening. We're going to take it right now. So one more segment remaining as we go to break. A reminder, if you are on social media, Hollis Wright is wherever you are. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, wherever you are, they are a great educational and informational resource. All you've got to do to find them, just search Hollis Wright and you'll be able to find them on your favorite social media platform. Stay tuned. The final segment of The Attorney is coming right up. I'm Josh Wright with the law firm of Hollis Wright. In court, attorneys are not allowed to tell juries certain things. For example, we cannot talk about a defendant's net worth, meaning the defendant's ability, resources, or insurance to pay a verdict. In this week's Legal 4 and 1, we're answering the question, why can't lawyers talk about a defendant's net worth to a jury? Now, Rule 403 of the Alabama Rules of Evidence states, in part, Relevant evidence may be excluded if its probative value is substantially outweighed by the danger of unfair prejudice. Long-standing Alabama cases have held that the net worth of a defendant falls under this catch-all rule and is to be excluded. The reasoning behind the rule is that if a jury knows a defendant is wealthy, then the jury might award more money to the plaintiff. And this goes one step further. If an attorney makes any remarks that suggest the defendant is responsible because he is wealthy or rich and the plaintiff is poor, that can be grounds for a new trial. If you're ever on a jury, the reality in our state is this. In almost every lawsuit that goes to trial, the attorneys representing both the plaintiff and the defendant have already looked at whether there's sufficient insurance coverage or assets to satisfy a verdict. Most likely, the parties would not pursue a civil lawsuit if damages could not be paid after a jury returns a verdict. 
So even though lawyers cannot mention the net worth of a defendant during trial, there are likely are resources available to pay a verdict in court. Please remember, your call, email, or text to the attorneys is free. All of us at Hollis Wright want to help answer your questions on real issues you face. And remember, a competent lawyer will respond to every question you send in. That's our pledge and promise to you. And as always, thanks for watching the attorneys right here on WDTN. Welcome back. Our final segment, Time Just Flies, on this show. We've got about seven minutes remaining, so if you want to take advantage of that opportunity to speak with the attorneys from Hollis Wright, you have about seven minutes to do so, so go ahead, pick up the phone, and give them a call. Uh, a question we've got here, do I have to divulge that I have been charged for an offense that has been expunged? Good question. Um, no, you do not. Uh, of course, with anything, there are certain exceptions, but with regards to an expungement, you do not have to reveal it on a application for employment, an application for credit. You don't have to divulge it unless there is a circumstance where you are up doing an application with a regulatory agency okay. with regards to licensing, um, certain utilities, and also with regards to financial institutions. Yeah, and I would probably caution the viewers in these situations that if they've had their record expunged, they likely have a lawyer that helped them get it expunged. And if they find themselves in a situation where they're having to answer those types of questions, probably a good idea to pick up the phone and ask you sort of your thoughts on it because it's interesting because I've seen questions in various applications over the years that it's not just have you been arrested, charged, or convicted, it'll also say, or have you had your record expunged? And so that puts people in a very difficult yeah. spot because it it's like, well, the whole point of having my record yeah. expunged was so that I didn't have right. to answer this question. And now they're asking you to answer the question. So in those situations, it's probably a good idea to, to call you and, and get some advice from you on that point. Right, that's correct. Uh, I will say, however, though, it depends on who's asking you. If it's a governmental right. agency or utility, of course you would have to divulge it. But if it's an employer asking you that, you do have the right to say no because the expungement has the benefit of not having that on your record at all mm -hmm. for public access and the statute actually says that the crime is considered never to have occurred. Wow. Right, right. So I explain procedurally h how this happens. So you file the petition or the application with the court and you either do or don't have a hearing and the judge grants the petition to expunge a certain record or all of your, your criminal records. How does that happen in the system? Is there somebody behind the scenes that says, okay, judge so-and-so expunged this person's record, now we've got to eliminate this from our database? Like, How does that work and is it reliable, I guess? Yes, it is reliable. Um, with the petition, it's going to be some other items, of course, that are filed with it. Um, Aaliyah will produce a background check that shows everything that the person has. Um, and we'll have to make some sworn statement affidavits stating that you haven't been convicted of anything since that time. Just different qualifications that have to be met. But once those qualifications are met, the petition is submitted to the court. And then the court will at that time, if it's satisfied that those conditions have been met, it will grant the expungement on those particular crimes that are expungeable. As a lawyer, this is an interesting question to me, but maybe not so much to the viewers, but do you have to file your petition or application under the same criminal charge or conviction number that it was originally under and go back before the same judge that handled a plea of guilty or do you just file a petition openly and get assigned to different courts or judges? Oh, okay, good question. No, the application would be filed with the circuit court of the county in which the crime, the conviction was. Okay. For instance, if there was a crime in, say, Vestavia, it would be filed with the circuit court of Birmingham. Yeah. Same thing, Bessemer, it would be filed with the circuit court of Jefferson County Bessemer Division. So you may or may not wind up with the same judge you had when you pled guilty, but it's not a requirement that you get to that same judge. Absolutely, because even the misdemeanor crimes, they're going to be at a 
uh, city jurisdictional level, but they will have to be filed with the circuit court of that county that the uh, jurisdiction was located in. And does the district attorney's office within that county who prosecuted the original crime, do they get notified of the petition and do they have the ability to, I guess, respond or intervene and potentially object to the request uh, of a record to be expunged? Yes, generally speaking, the um, DA, well not generally, they're going to be notified that you filed a petition, um, but they have 45 days in which to object if they intend to do so. Once the objection is made, of course, there would be a hearing in those instances. If there's no objection made, the law says that the district attorney has waived their right to object. Okay, do you run into that frequently where the district attorney's office will get in, involved? I guess it depends on the type of crime they were convicted of, the publicity, and, and perhaps maybe, I guess, the victims of the crime. How, but do you run into that typically? Absolutely, it does. And those items are the things that make a difference, of course, what the charge was. And it also makes a difference whether it was on the um, city jurisdictional level or whether it was in district court with the state. So all of those things have take a take a play take yeah. a play in it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. No, that's perfectly fine. Um, uh, of course, like anything in life, cost and fees are a part of everything that we do. So talk a little bit about the, the cost and fees associated with this process. Sure. Um, there's two fees associated with an expungement. There is the filing fee and uh, also the attorney fee. With regards to the filing fee, that increased in 2021 when convictions was added. So it's no longer $300, which was uh, the fee uh, beginning in 2021. 14. It's been increased to $500, so it is a little more pricey. However, it's convictions now that are eligible, so I think it's well worth the fee. And I guess your fee is influenced by how much time you have to spend on the file? Absolutely. Uh, depending on how many expungements need to be um, done, performed, and sometimes the nature of it. If I know it's going to be something that's highly contested, it may be more work involved. Yeah. We've got just one minute remaining, but just a few seconds from you, a final thought for our viewers? Um, I would say that Alabama has not had this law for very long. Right. Uh, 2014, as you heard me say, was when it came out. Mm -hmm. 2021 is when the convictions were added. So I would say that it is an excellent idea to take advantage of it. It's probably going to be something that will help your future, your family, right. all things concerning yeah. you. Any yeah, part. she said it perfectly, and I would just encourage the viewers, if them or a family member are in these situations, give her a call. I'm sure she'll give them a brief free consult just to give them an idea of whether or not they're eligible for it. But Cherie knows what she's talking about in this area and can yeah. help a lot of people. Well, really appreciate your time. Thank Great you. job. Good night. Good to be here. Carter, good to see good you to as see well. You. Uh, thank you all for being with us, and we really do appreciate you uh, being with us as well. Don't forget, as we kind of wrap things up, look for Hollis Wright on social media. Just search it wherever you are, they are as well. And we'll get together once again. We'll look for you next week right here uh, next time on The Attorneys. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for watching The Attorneys, sponsored by Hollis Wright.